Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today I'm going to do a video on the spider design. Now I know you guys are probably saying you've done a few of those already. Well this one is going to be a, another in the series of the mystical magicals where I dye up, uh, tie up one design and then I dye it in several different methods. I've done a few of those for the spiral, I did one for the scrunch, and now it's time for the spider. So what I'm going to do is take all of these tees, tie them up in the same fashion, and then dye them in as many different ways as I can think of. So stay tuned, what you guys are going to see is I'm going to tie one t-shirt on camera, the rest will be done off camera. But then you're going to see me dye it, and then you'll see the reveal of how it's done, and then you'll see me dye the next one, and then the reveal of how that one's done, and so forth until I get through this pile of teas. So sit back and relax. We're going to get started here. So let's start with one tea. I always like to turn mine inside out, just because it makes finding the seams easier for centering the tea. Also, if you're using any kind of washable markers, sometimes the markers don't wash out all the way, so that's another reason to turn your keys inside out. And one last reason is the tiny little specks you might get from undissolved dye. Um, most times when you have those tiny little spots, they're only on one side of the t-shirt, whichever side is on the outside. So if you turn them on the inside, then those little spots will be in the inside of the tee instead of the outside. Enough of that, let's go ahead and get this one centered up. I do plan on making another video of how I center the tees. I'll do it outside so that you guys can see the whole process, but we're going to do this one quick and dirty. The other thing that you can control when you're doing your designs, whether it's a spider or any other design, is which side is facing the table when you tie it up. Because whichever side is facing the table has a nicer, smoother effect. So I like to try to put that on the front whenever possible. So in this case, with me tucking my sleeve in, this here is the front of my tee. This is the back of my tee. So I'm going to turn this over now, putting the front of the tee down on the table. And then when I tie the spider design, I typically will go right across from the armpits, straight across, and that typically will put the spider right on your chest. And if we look, here's the, the collar, so that's down about two hand widths from the collar there. And anywhere in here you can do that. Um, I will do one other one where I twist in a different direction, but I'll explain that one when I do it. So for now what I'm going to do is pinch here. <clears throat> and then when I twist, I am twisting where I'm working towards the bottom of the t-shirt. And I will tie all of them except for one in that fashion. And I'll show you how I tie that other one. So basically what I'm doing is twisting and I'm working my way towards the bottom here. And I like to line up <clears throat> All of these creases as much as I can because all of these, the tops of these, are going to be the legs of your spider. So <clears throat> if you can get those pleats laying next to each other and nice and even, you'll get a better spider design coming out. And I just keep wrapping it in. Anytime I get any parts that bunch up, I just kind of tuck them down as much as I can. Get them to lay next to each other. And then I keep rolling, and once again, I just try to keep pulling as many of these pleats up as I can because all of those pleats are going to turn into the spider. And once you get down to the bottom, usually the sleeves are right here, and I just kind of tuck those down. I just create as many pleats as I can for those. Tuck that down, tuck the bottom down, and then it's time to tie this up. You can use rubber bands uh, or whatever you choose to do. I usually like to use kite string. But any method of holding it together that you have is perfectly okay. So 
there is how I'm going to tie all of the t-shirts up save for one and once again I'll explain that one when I do it but I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off now get the rest of the t-shirts tied up and then when I come back I'll just go through and start dyeing each one in a different fashion and show you the results after each one so stay tuned okay so I said I was going to tie one of them up differently and this is the one so I've still done the same fold in half where I have the t-shirt turned inside out and I have the center of the front and the center of the back separate from each other so that's all the same but the the one difference is instead of starting right across from the armpit here on the chest I'm gonna start a little bit lower and instead of turning going towards the bottom I'm going to turn going towards the top and what that's going to do is turn the design instead of being this way it's going to be this way and that all just comes from turning uh, doing your twist in a different direction so I'm going to start down here towards the bottom and I'm going to twist and I'm working my way now up towards the top of the T here's the, the back of the collar and once again I have the, my front side facing down just so I get a better die job on the front of the t-shirt and I'm going to tie it in the same fashion as I go I'm going to kind of pull on the t-shirt and try to create these long creases and those creases are what I'm going to wrap around the t-shirt and then when I dye it these are going to be what are the legs of the spider My goal usually is to try to keep this as flat as possible and keep as many of these pleats or creases up on top as I can just so that I get a nicer die job on the t-shirt. You can tie this up in whatever fashion if you prefer rubber bands and I say use rubber bands. I just prefer kite string so that's what I use. But I used rubber bands for many years. Okay, that one's done. So we're going to get some gloves on and get some color put on this thing. So stay tuned. Hello oh, and welcome back to Mr. Tie-Dye with uh, doing this spider design. So I went ahead and tied up nine spiders. There's only one of them that I tied differently. This one I tied going upside down basically I'll explain that when I get to it it'll be the second one but anyways all of these are tied up the same way uh, after I got them all tied up I soaked them in soda ash so they're ready for dye so I'm gonna just go through one by one dye it uh, explain the method I'm using to dye it with and then I will show you the results so we're gonna just work our way through these nine different teas here so let's get start out here uh, this one here, we're going to do just one color on it, um, just because, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye the front of the T. So whenever I was twisting all of these up, I always made sure that the front of the T was the one that was down on the table as I was spinning it. So that's the side that I'm going to dye because I have nicer, cleaner lines on this side. Uh, so that's just my choice there. I guess I better stay in camera range here <laughs> so anyways we're going to dye this in just one color and then we're going to leave it to batch so I'm going to go with uh, deep purple and whenever I'm dyeing just one color basically then white is my other color so I'm just going to give this a really nice heavy coat of dye and let it soak in good There's my one color. I'm going to let this batch with the colored side up because I do want that purple to kind of soak down inside there. Uh, I'll check back on this in a few minutes after I probably dye another shirt or two. And if I see little white fuzzy 
things sticking up, then I will add just a little bit more. But the bottom side of this is white. I can see a little bit of purple, so I think that's going to be a good, good one color dye there. So we're going to put this aside to batch for 48 hours. So you'll see the results here in about two seconds. Good morning and welcome to Hippie Christmas with Mr. Tie Dye. So here's the the first of the spider designs. This one here, I did just one color on the top and I left the bottom white. So, and I did see some of the dye had kind of soaked down through there, so I think we got good saturation. So, let's open this thing up and see what we get. Nice color inside there. We'll separate this out. And there is the one color spider design. Front and back. Thank you for watching. We'll get on to the rest of them. Okay, so this one here is the one that I twisted upside down and basically what that means is on all of the rest of them I twisted, I pinched right across from the armpit and I twisted going towards the bottom of the shirt. This one here I pinched down towards the belly of the tee and I twisted it going up the shirt and what that's going to do is just turn the spider upside down. So you'll see that in here and this one I'm going to dye in two colors, one color on the top, one color on the bottom. And I'm going to go with nice contrasting colors. So I have a nice forest green and I have a nice bright green. So those two should contrast nightly, nicely. So what I'm going to do is put the, the forest green on first. And I'm putting this here on the back side of the t-shirt. That looks like a really nice contrast between the light and the dark green, so I'm excited to see how that one looks. So anyways, you'll see the results in about two seconds. Alright, here we are with the two color spider design. And this also is the upside down spider. So this one here we did from down low instead of up on the chest and that turned the spider upside down. If we twist it the other direction, these, instead of these legs coming down this way, they'd be coming down this other direction. So there is the upside down spider dyed with just two colors. Okay, we're back. This time I'm going to do a two color one, but this one here I'm using primary colors. Uh, this is the way that I do the tie-dye when I go into the schools and work with the kids, is I bring just primary colors and then they mix the colors right on the t-shirt. So what I'm going to use is lemon yellow and turquoise for this because I want a green spider. So that's just... Another part of the learning, uh, when you're using just primary colors to mix colors, you're going to start with one of them. Uh, I basically want a green spider on my tee, and I could start with either blue or yellow, but by starting with yellow first and then putting the green on, I'm going to have a dark green spider. If I did it the other way around, then I would have a bright green spider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by using the lemon yellow and I'm going to dye the top and the bottom with my yellow. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the turquoise. The yellow one is I'm going to saturate it a little bit more just to make sure I get a really good coat. And then the turquoise I'll put just a really quick 
light coat on there. So always the first color you go on nice and, well, I guess that's not hard and fast rule, that's just how I do it. You guys can do it how you want. If you want to do a light color, just a light coat, and then put a heavy coat of the other one, I say go for it and see what happens. I love to experiment, so I just keep playing with So now I got that pretty well saturated. You could peek down in here and see. I don't see too much uh, white in there, just little bits. Little bits of white is fine, even a lot of white is fine. Like I say, there's a little bit of white down in there. But I basically, I just want to get a really nice coat on there. And then with the turquoise, I'm just going to go over it very quickly. Just putting one light coat. I'm not even going to try and make it completely solid. I'm just going to go quickly. So that's the whole thing. If you put too much on, then it's going to be a really soppy mess. But it will still, still turn out good because there were some of those kid t-shirts. I put in the bags in a puddle formed immediately. And all the kids had beautiful teas. So, anyways, we're going to go for it. Okay, there is the two color spider with primary colors. So I guess it technically makes it three colors because I used yellow and turquoise and now I have green. So stay tuned, you'll see the results in about two seconds. Okay, here are the results of our primary spider. I used two primary colors. Dyed the top and the bottom the same with yellow and then dyed top and the bottom the same with turquoise. This is the way I do it in the schools with the kids. They get to mix their colors right on the t-shirt. So that's what we've done here. Let's open that up and see our work. Yeah, looks like some nice color inside there. my spider design with just the primary colors. It's not quite as obvious. I might have got a little bit too crazy with my dye, but you can still see the spider design in there. So, we'll get this washed up. Okay, this one here we're going to dye it instead of dyeing uh, solid, I'm going to dye in pie shapes because the spider design it just creates a different pattern when dyed in the pies. So that's what we're going to do. And I think we're just going to go with a mix of different colors here. I'm going to start out with emerald green. And I'm putting the colors on the same side on the top and the bottom. So the green was on the same spot there. But you could rotate them a little bit if you want to come up with something a little bit different. The next one, I'm going to let this batch for 48 hours and you'll see the results in about two seconds. Alright, time to reveal another one. This one, as you recall, I dyed in pie shapes on one side, and I dyed, uh, no, I guess I did pies on both sides. Okay. So when you do pies on both sides, it gives you a different type of design rather than the spider. You can still kind of see the effects of the spider in there, but it's not quite the same. So let's open this up. So there's the design you get when you dye 
the spider design in pie shapes. I use just three colors here, but you can also do this in the full rainbow or whatever other colors you choose. But when you die in the pie shapes, then you get these little individual lines forming instead of the actual spider design. You can see it kind of in the uh, relief areas. All the little creases form the shape of the spider. Anyways, peace. Okay, we're back for another one. This one here, I'm going to use four colors and I'm going to dye it half and half. And we're going to do different colors on the top and the bottom. So we're going to do dark colors on the top, light colors on the bottom. And this here is the front of the t-shirt. So we're just going to split that right down the middle. This here is Bluebird. So that, that was forest green and this is Bluebird on this side. And then we're going to flip this straight over and I'm going to put lighter shades of each color on the back side. So next to the forest green, I'm going to use bright green. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and batch this with the lighter colors up and you'll see the results in about two seconds. All right, time for the next one. This one we used four colors on, and I dyed two on the front, a blue and a green. And then on the back side, of the back side of the blue, I put a light blue, and the back side of the green, I put a light green. So we did a four color spider here. And that just changes things up a little bit. It's kind of fun just to see what it does. Oh, and this was on a sleeveless tee. And even though it's a sleeveless tee, I still tuck things in just like I had sleeves. So if there were sleeves, they would both be tucked together right there. Okay, so there is the four color spider. So that's what I got. I had my, blue, my two greens together here on the one side and my two blues on the other side. So that's why it gives broke up the pattern and you can still see the spider design in there. Fun stuff. Okay, we're on to the next one. Uh, in a couple videos I've done what I call a pour die where I just pull a dye straight out of the soda ash and then I pour dye straight on it and then I just uh, in the past I think I have flipped it over and added more dye to the bottom this time I'm going to put dye just on the top and actually I'm going to turn this over so that the front of the t-shirt is facing up so what I'm going to do is pull this out set it on my rack and then I'm going to directly pour this cup of dye right on top of it so, let's see if I can do this without spilling things all over the place. Alright, so let's pull that out. We'll let a little bit of the soda ash drain off. Okay, now we're just going to pour this straight on. I'm going to make like a little cup so it doesn't all just run straight off of here. And I don't think I need all of the dye that I put in the cup, so we're going to save that. And I'm just going to let this just slowly drip through, and then I'm going to let it batch with the dye side up, because I just want that continued motion of the dye soaking through there. So you'll see the results of that in about two seconds, but it's going to batch for 48 hours first. Okay, if you recall, this one was a pour dye. <clears throat> I've done a pour dye on... Uh, scrunch in a video. I've done pour dye on a few different designs, but I hadn't done a video yet. So this one here, I just dunked it in soda ash and then poured a cup of dye on just one side. So that leaves one side undyed and it'll just add into my detail. So let's open that up. 
Yeah, that's fun. Once again, this was another sleeveless tee. So, but I still tucked everything together. All right, and there is the spider design poor die. Okay, this time we're going to do lines on one side and dye the other side solid. So I just want to kind of play with this every different direction just to show you what different ways of dyeing the spider looks like. So I'm using emerald green, bluebird, forest green, and deep purple. So all dark colors on this side and then I'm going to use a bright green on the other side. And I can see some good color coming through. The more you do these, the more you'll get a feel for it. But you can always use your cuticle pusher to open up the creases and see just how deep the saturation is. I'm going to batch this with the light side up 48 hours. And you'll see it in about two seconds. Okay, here we go with the next one. As you can see, this one here, I dyed in lines going across on one side, and then on the other, I dyed it solid. Just to see what all the spider design has to reveal. So on the other side, I dyed in the, the light bright green just to give some nice contrast to those darker colors. So, let's open this all the way up. Yeah, it's a nice color in there. So there is the spider design once again with having the... What did we do on this one? <laughs> Oh, I did lines and we still got the nice spider design and these here are my lines coming in every different color there so that'll be fun to see once it's washed. Stay tuned. Okay, I've decided to do another pour dye just because I had an idea of adding more colors in there instead of doing just one. So I have another t-shirt soaking in the soda ash and what I'm going to do is pull it out. I have the half a cup of the bluebird I'm going to pour on there. And then I think I'm going to add some deep purple. So I'm going to do kind of a half and half. Let it soak all the way through and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add some light pink or light fuchsia to the other side. So we're just going to have a little bit of fun and experiment, see what we get here. So I'm going to pull this out, let it drain just a little bit. Let's get rid of that and pour this on half. my deep purple. There it is. So I'm going to take a half a cup of deep purple, pour it on the other side. Now I'm going to let that sit for a bit and drip out. Once it's kind of all dripped 
through there, then I'm going to flip it over and add the pink or the light fuchsia. So stay tuned, we'll be back. Okay, we're back with this poor dye. This is soaked in for, I'd say, a good 25 minutes. So I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to take the cap off of this so I can pour quickly. But I just want to give a quick pour on the back side of this in light pink. Yeah, let me put the lid on so I can squirt places. Alrighty. I say that's fairly well saturated, so that's been an experiment by Mr. Tie-Dye that just came to me as I was making this video and we decided to just add it in there. So there you go. Okay, I'm going to batch this for 48 hours just like this and I'm going to come back and do one more video but you'll see the results of this one in about two seconds. Alright, just because I love to experiment I had to do a second pour dye on this one but this time I used two different colors. On this side and after I let it soak in then I used a light pink on the other side just to give me some contrast so let's see what this one did a lot of white left over in there but that can just add to the detail and the patterning <clears throat> yeah nice color in there and this one I did long a long sleeve tee and once again I did the same thing I just tucked that second sleeve right in there I lined up the bottom hem here and I lined up that shoulder seam. So the same way whether I do a long sleeve or a short sleeve, I tuck that second sleeve in the same fashion. The long sleeve just takes longer getting everything lined up, but it can be done. And for me it just makes making the side to side symmetry more equal. So, lay this one out. <clears throat> so that was the pour die. So on the pour die, you get a little bit more of this die traveling around, making these little fuzzy edges here. So that's kind of fun. Anyways, we'll get this washed and posted. Okay, here's the last one. This one I decided to do a wild spider. So I've done a wild spiral. This one I'm going to do a wild spire, spider just because I have a whole bunch of dyes, just a little bit of different colors that have been sitting around here for a while. I even have a brown that was mixed up. It's been in my fridge, but it's been, it was mixed in April. So it's probably a tan by now. Uh, the rest of these colors look like they were probably mixed in September, but they've all been stored in my fridge and I've been getting good colors out of them, but I'm just going to give it a try and see what happens. So, for the wild spider, the way that I do it is I just dye little narrow triangles and I just pick up, I use every different color that I have here. So I've got some forest green and light purple, light pink, orange, lemon yellow, emerald green, brown, bluebird, bright green, red, deep purple, and oh, I even have some cerulean blue that was mixed up in April also. So maybe we'll throw some of that on there. Anyways, I'm going to go in fast forward mode and we're just going to dye this up. I'm going to dye both sides, just random colors in little tiny triangles. Okay, I just transferred it to a different bottle. The big bottle didn't have a hole poked in the lid.
There's the wild spider. So I'm going to batch this for 48 hours and like the rest of them, you'll see this results in about two seconds. Thank you for watching. Please give my videos a thumbs up if you like them. Share them wherever they're legal. And I ask that you guys let the commercials run before and after the videos. I do not put the mid-roll ads on my videos, but the before and after videos help provide a little bit of extra income and it doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of time. Anyways, thank you and you'll see all the results here soon. All right, now it's time for the wild spider. This one here, I just used all of the colors I had left over and dyed just little bitty pieces. And I used the same colors on the front and the back, except for on the back, I don't think the last two colors fit in. And the colors <clears throat> uh, had orange that happened to line up the same as I, because I flipped it over and then I just started dying. Orange is the other color that overlapped. All the rest of them didn't. So let's see what maybe the orange might have done within this design here. Well, looks like it just gave me a more solid line where the other ones are all broke up. But that will be interesting. I haven't done a wild spider before. So, that looks pretty cool. I think I like that one. All the different colors broke up in there. And a more solid orange. So next time I might make sure that I don't match up any of the colors. Because I really do love the, the contrast, the blending of everything. So, and the back side came out pretty good too. So, anyways, that's that. We're going to go ahead and get this video all put together. And by the time you see it, everything will be all lined up. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video. And post a comment or a question if you need to. Peace out.